Well, hello class. So I'm going to record a set of videos for uh, what I have is IT320. And in IT320, what we do is we learn about system administration, mostly with Linux and cloud. So in cloud, I say when I say cloud, it's AWS. Um, I'm going to split those channels um, and we'll, I'll work on the Linux side first. Um, in the cloud, we've actually been using AWS's content, so I don't know how much I'm going to record videos for there. Um, but I will be using um, it heavily for the Linux side. So uh, I'm going to be using Learner Lab, so you can see over here. Uh, in fact, let me leave the student view. Um, and I'll come back to that, and I think it'll be fine. So uh, under the dashboard, if you're in multiple classes from me with AWS, you might have multiple um, uh, classes here. So, uh, but Learner Lab is what we mostly use for Linux administration. So what this will do is it'll allow you to spin up your own servers, um, so which is really cool. And none of that, Amazon gives you $100 to do it. So uh, if you're new to a course like this, uh, your professor will put you in the course, most likely. Uh, you'll get an email, and the email, depending on how your institution is set up, but here at BYU Hawaii, um, the email will have a get, 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 uh, get it, getting started link. Sorry, a getting started link. Uh, you'll click on that, and it'll say, um, are you new to Canvas? Uh, do you already have a Canvas account, or do you need to create a new one? Even though we use Canvas here at BYU Hawaii, it's a different Canvas, so you need to click uh, create a new one. And then you create a password for it. Some institutions probably have single sign-on um, set up and, and it's working. Uh, we're pretty small here and we don't have that. So uh, at least not in 2022. Um, so uh, if we look here, the Learner Lab is basically a lab. It's just a place that you can play. And I'm going to do student view uh, so, it, uh, so it looks like most students. and I really slim it down because I've actually started putting multiple um, multiple classes in here so I don't want the discussions and stuff to, to be there because I don't want them to be able to see who's in maybe a different section or a different class. Um, so under modules here, uh, Learner Lab is what we're going to use. I've already started this lab so as long as that uh, um, it doesn't do something funky with me being in the student account. Yeah, so it's still started. So the, it takes uh, two to four minutes to start this lab. So just make sure you start it. As an instructor, uh, you can pre-warm these. Uh, I haven't been doing that for most of my classes. Um, so AWS, well, especially with machine learning, if you pre-warm them, then those machines are running and unless the student shut, it shows up and shuts it down, they get billed for the four, the total uh, four hours or whatever until the lab shuts down. So uh, I, I the main one that I'd like to pre-warm it in, I'm, I'm cautious because I'd have to go and remember to shut down the ones for the students that may not show up. Okay, so we're going to do um, uh, a Linux server. So the first thing before I do that, let me uh, open up a command uh, window. And since we're talking about um, doing Linux, uh, this is something that we're going to be working with on the command line. So uh, let's go ahead and do a command that you're all going to need to do anyway. So, and that is SSH dash keygen. Okay. So SSH keygen will create your private and public keys. Now I have a lot, so I'm not going to do this the way that you should. So do what I say, not what I do. Okay. So, you should probably leave this as default. It'll put it in the right area that you won't have to use that there's a dash I flag. Since I already have one of these and I don't want it to overwrite mine, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put a name here. So I'll still leave it in home jstrain uh, ssh. That's a great place to put it. And I'm gonna call this um, Linux 2022, okay? And then when it asks for a passphrase, this is like a password to your key. Um, and I'm going to leave it blank. And I suggest that you leave it blank as well. Um, now, some places you should put a, a passphrase on. Since this is for learning only, we're going to leave it blank. So 
a private key is like a it, it's better than a password. But if someone gets a hold of this, then they can log in as you. So a passphrase is a password to your key. So that if someone gets a hold of it, it's harder for them to use it. Okay. So if you see, it created not only the home jstrain.ssh linux 2022, but it also created the pub for that. And this is what we're going to need here shortly. Okay. So now let's come back. So what we're going to use in Amazon Web Services for Linux uh, system administration, the Linux side, is mostly going to be EC2. Uh, and that is uh, Elastic uh, Compute, CPU and Compute, I think is what it stands for, EC2. Um, elastic for E, uh, CPU and, uh, or, and Compute, or something like that. So the two Cs. So E, C, and 2. Um, and what we're going to do here first is we're going to upload our key pair. Now, we could get the key pair here from um, Amazon, but that's going to change, and they have our private key. That's not a good idea. So um, we're going to create our own. So we, well, we already created our own, so we're going to upload our own. So the first thing we need to come down to is we need to let them know that we have our key pair. So we come down here to key pair, networks and security key pairs. And see, this is the one that they created. Well, we're going to create a key pair is what it says, but we are actually going to, nope, not create a key pair. We're going to upload import key pair. Thank you. Um, so we're going to browse. And if I go to my home, .ssh, you're going to see quite a few here. So here's the Linux. 2022 pub. If you notice, it started looking for only the pubs. Um, so there it is. And I'm going to call this Linux 2022. So I find that it's good to call it the same so that I remember what it is. Okay. Um, import key pair. So there we go. Now that I've imported the key pair, I'm going to go ahead and create an instance. So I come over here to instance, and you think of an instance, this is a virtual server. So I'm going to launch an instance. And since we're doing Linux, we're going to just take this Amazon Linux 2, uh, select. I'm just trying to see what the difference is here. If I support EBS, HVM. Hmm. So I don't know what the difference is between the top two, but we'll grab this one. Um, by the way, and I should have pointed out, there's a key there that you can use with the CLI. We're going to go ahead and use T2 Micro. Uh, it will be fine for almost everything. In fact, I've ran uh, web servers with this. Um, so it'll be fine for everything in the class. So, and here it just goes over some basic information. We're not going to change anything. Uh, you might want to look at these. Well, security group, I, we're going to want to change this eventually, the security group. But it, you can see that it allows SSH to TCP on port 22, um, which is fine. But if we're going to create a web server, if we're going to create uh, a Tomcat, if we're going to create whatever we're going to do, we're going to want to need to open more ports. Plus, sometimes I have students change ports. Okay, so this is a security group that needs to, to things to be added if you're going to change things. Um, so you you should get familiar with these so that you know what you're doing. But this is where we'd add more space, and tags is where you can give it different names. So uh, there's lots of options here, but we're not going to need any of those specific ones for this. So we're going to go ahead and launch, and it says, hey. Uh, so choose the key pair, it's the Linux one, and you have to acknowledge that you do have it, uh, and we'll launch the instance. Now, uh, it doesn't take long at all to launch this instance. So you see that it's launched, I can come back, I can click on, on, the, the, on the instance itself and get instance information, but I, I can even get rid of that and see all my instances. Uh, you have to pay for these uh, and realize this is like, Oh, two, three cents, I think, an hour 
uh, is what this one is. Uh, that's one of the reasons I like to use it is because it's pretty cheap. Uh, and it's billed by the minute. Um, and that changes over time, so just to be, be mindful. And if you grab a bigger one, of course, it costs more. Um, so here, I, you can see, here's the public IPv4 DNS, and there's also the public IPv4. Uh, I can click on this instance and get additional information, or coming back to EC2 instances, I can also just click this uh, box right here, and it'll show up down here. So I can copy the IPv4 address, or um, the, so of course there's the private one. This is not what you can get to. You need the public one. Uh, the private is internal. So grab the public one there, come back to my window, and now we want to SSH to it. So this is where if you did not change this, uh, you're not going to need the I. You could just SSH to ec2-user at and that IP address. And that will work for you. Um, for me, since I have multiple private keys and I changed the name of this private key, I do need to add a, an additional parameter here, which by the way, SSH keygen and um, SSH works in both Linux. Well, it works on Linux, it works on Windows, and it works on Mac. It only works on Windows 10. Um, so it doesn't work on some of the older versions of Windows. It's newer to Windows. Uh, thank you to the management there that is now gone that will allow it. So I'm just going to use a dash I flag here. Um, that means I'm using an, an identity file, a key that is not default. And this is the key that I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. Um, and that should allow me to log in. So we're going to hit enter. And the first thing it says is, hey, I haven't seen this before. Are you sure, sure you want to keep connecting? And I'm going to say yes, because this is a new system I just barely created. So yes, so, and I'm in, it's that easy. Cool, now one of the things I like to do, which it'll tell me if there's updates needed, but this is a brand new system, it looks like it ran updates, um, but I love to sudo yum dash y update. Um, so, sorry, yum dash y in, um, update. Um, so there's no packages marked for update. So it, I, you actually could have seen that when you logged in, but I wanted to get you that command. So sudo is switch user and do. And just so happens that by default, it switches to root. EC2 user can do that. Yum is the package manager for this. Dash Y says, don't ask me, just do it. And update is to update the system. Uh, sorry, I had a typo there. That happens to some of the best of us. So uh, today we uh, created a key, we got into Amazon um, Academy, we launched a system, well, we stored our key there, we launched the system, and we installed it. Well, well we, uh, we, sorry, we logged into it. So um, now there's one more thing I do want to take you through uh, in case you're having issues with your public-private key. Uh, the main thing that I usually see is permissions. So um, I'm just going to say if you've downloaded the key from Amazon, so uh, let's just pretend that I have a key file here. So I'm just going to touch my key file. So if I look here, so touch created it. ls-ltrah just shows some information that I like to see. Um, and this here is my key file. One of the things that you see here is read, write, read, write, read. And we're going to talk about these later. But I, what I want you to know is if this really was a key file, these permissions would not allow it to work. So because you, some of you might download the key from Amazon, in Linux, the command is chmod. And we're going to use 700, my key file. Okay, uh, actually we didn't need seven, we could do six, but that's fine. Uh, so now if we look at this again, uh, it's read, write, execute. We don't need the execute, um, but no one else has access to it. So that would, that would work for a private key. Actually, it would be better if it's six. 
because then you don't have the execute. It doesn't need execute. Um, so chmod600 in the key name if you're running Linux or Mac. If you're on Windows, sorry, you're running a virus. Um, Windows is, uh, is a different beast, and you're going to have to remove the permissions for everyone but the user, I believe. Um, so one of these days, maybe I'll uh, get a Windows friend to create a video about that. So thank you. Bye.